जर्नलिस्ट हैं डॉक्टर मीनू मेथन टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट सेफ आयोल एक्सप्लांटेशन टेक्निक्स Yeah, I'll I'll share my slides now. Uh, is my slide visible, madam? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, AOS and Dr. Namrata, for this uh, opportunity. And my topic is on uh, safe IO explantation techniques. So I have no financial interest in this. So let's go into some scenarios straight away. So let's see. This is a hydrophobic. acrylic iol placed in the sulcus decentered and now i put in sodium hyaluronate and initially i had put in viscoat to fill up the anterior chamber very well and then you can see that it is flipped also it's upside down and i just uh, dial it out carefully from the sulcus to see whether there is any attachments or into the anterior chamber after that after putting viscoelastic behind the iol i hold it with a micro rexus forceps and i cut with this is a 2.8 mm incision This is a long straight uh, vena scissors. I don't have fancy instruments. I don't have nothing against those, but then this works for me for all cases. So this is from Appa Sami. No financial interest in this, but I just keep one or two of these um, very well cutting, sturdy uh, tipped ones separately for these kind of cases, and I don't use it for any other uh, cutting. And once those these are cut into two different uh, two independent halves. Uh, it is dialed into position. I just want the open end of the haptic away from my incision, so that it comes out very easily. Or the other way is to get one of these haptics uh, out through the main incision and then grasp it and pull it out. So another case in which there is a subluxated uh, multifocal iol, the whole bag is out. We are planning a glued iol, and here the problem is that there is no vitreous support there for the lens. So we have to fill it up with viscoat completely. No financial interest in that. but then viscoat and sodium hyaluronate so that it supports the lens well again the same technique holding and then if you feel that it is tilting like this just open a little bit more and go in and cut in small by small cuts and then if you don't want this uh, half of it to fall down and if you are very scared you can have one end of the haptic out through a paracentesis and uh, keep it steady there and then hold the other side and bring it out and this works for multi piece iols also here there is a decentered iol with a pc rent and uh, other problems there are the, this is a, a jnj lenses no nothing against any lens but then some of them are rigid very rigid material although they are hydrophobic this is a, an alcon lens but in all these i find that steadying the lens and having the chamber full with viscoelastic which is high molecular weight viscoat to cover your endothelium and sodium hyaluronate to fill up the bag and keep it steady even if you take a large uh, tipped instrument like this the anterior chamber doesn't shallow and if it shallows please always refill and then now see if i have cut half way through and if you are scared to go through uh, full uh, full length you can always rotate it 180 degrees and bring the uncut area close to your incision and complete the cut so now again the removal is the same way i just take the open end facing away from me the haptic and pull out one piece this is just a 2.8 or even you can have a 3 mm incision because there is no point in i believe that there is no point in struggling to bring out anything through a very small incision and trying and stretch the edges and make it heal back so it is better to have a 0.1 or 0.2 mm larger incision and get things out smoothly without disturb you can notice that the leading haptic is stuck within between the injector uh, plunger and the nozzle so once it comes out with a with a uh, sh 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 shudder you find that the haptic is not uh, completely in so it is per inflate the bag with sodium hyaluronic and get your lens in like uh, there is a connectivity problem Maybe you should switch off. No, I you are, yeah, yeah. I think uh, Dr. Minu Nathan is back again. So, uh, yes. Off. My video. Can somebody switch off video if there is a problem? Okay. So yeah, I I was into this video where where there is a uh, haptic damage and we want to get uh, an IOL scaffold here so that. 
you don't distort, you don't damage the anterior posterior capsule or the iris or the anterior capsule margin so that the IOL is inside the bag first, the second IOL which you want to put in and then you cut or bisect or take, take out the lens. So, this lens goes inside, the key is to have sodium hyaluronate or viscoat which will stay inside the bag and it will remain inflated. Again, now I go in with the same one as scissors, hold it up in the AC, the, the side paracentesis with the micro scissors, micro forceps holds it very well and I cut into two pieces and I explained as we showed before. And partially cutting and taking out is another option. See here again the problem is the hydro implantation is happening now. So I realized that the reading haptic has been cut and to my dismay the trailing haptic is also stuck within the plunger, between the plunger and the injector. So once that is released, we can we can pull it out. The another way to release it will be to finally cut the cut open, slit open the tip of the plunger. And once that is done, then only take the irrigation out. Otherwise, uh, the AC will shallow suddenly and you get the implant can hit on the endothelium. So after putting viscoelastic, here again, see the cut is only towards the, uh, till the middle of it. So ideally, I would not do this because the, uh, the part of the IOL which is here, I cut it till the middle of it and hold on to the side of one cut part, increase the incision size to 3 millimeters and then hold one end and pull you know it will just come out like this but then see what is happening at this point near under the incision the part of the iol which was pushing against the uh, the angle and the iris is little traumatic so what i nowadays do is to uh, cut one fourth of the lens out make one more cut okay, take one fourth or one fifth of it out and then that have that area free and then pull it out rotate it out like this and so sometimes you will, I have I encountered one or two cases like this. It has been referred from Maldives, this one. So the lens was very well centered and, okay, and fibrosed within the bag, but there was the whole haptic was out. And it is now in the anterior chamber and it is one part of it is stuck to the endothelium. So here the problem is the haptic which is causing the endothelial damage, but the lens is very well stuck. So in some cases where you see these kind of... Uh, uh, single piece lenses with the haptic, one haptic in the sulcus and the lens fully fibrosed in the bag and steady. You can always leave the IOL inside the bag if it is well centered and take out only the haptic. And this, and then wait for the cornea to clear or then go for a corneal procedure later. So AC IOLs, as we know, sometimes it is not to blame. The IOL is not the one to be blamed, but then if not well placed and if not well done, it can create very bad complications like this. See this corneal decompensation, glaucoma, all those things and fibrosin growth. And here the problem is that many times the haptics might get stuck within these membranes, within the angle, within the iris and it will be difficult to take out. So if it is not getting rotated and doesn't come out uh, in very gentle maneuvers, we can snip with the same scissors, we can snip off the haptics. So then the optic can be taken out better uh, easily and also then we can go at the haptics from different angles and maneuver it in different directions. So then you can take it out from the uh, erosions and the adhesions more easily and more atraumatically. Bleeding is one major thing which can happen if you drastically pull and without control. But if you pull it in, in different angles and in the axis of this uh, haptic, then we can bring it out more easily and then later on uh, go ahead um, to clear the cornea and to replace the lens, replace another lens later. And the last video will be on an ICL. This patient has undergone an RD surgery uh, after uh, an ICL and uh, it is silicon oil emulsified. So we are having an IOL uh, implantation plus a silicon oil removal, which is going to happen. So it is not that very easy if the pupil is not very dilated, but it is very fragile and thin and it is easily maneuverable. Only thing is we should not break the anterior capsule by doing this because we have to do a rexus. But there are holes in the in the in the ICL. If you see, uh, the, it doesn't have it in the center here. But then on the sides, it definitely has. You can hold that and dial it out again with the use of um, retentive viscoelastics. One haptic is brought out, and the other haptic is brought out uh, after that. And then you don't have to bisect it or cut or cut this one. It is very easy to bring it out. Hold it in one end, stabilize it. Hold one part of the haptic, and through a 2.8 millimeter incision is very easy to pull this out very gently, it folds on itself and comes out and then we can proceed with the um, procedure as such. And uh, thank you very much.